So what we have discovered in 30 years of research, there's six main uh, time zones that people live in. Two focus on the past, two on the present, and two on the future. The people who focus on the past either th remember all the good old times, successes, happy birthdays, nostalgia, these are the people who, who keep the family record, the family books, who have the fa family rituals. There are other people who focus only on regret, only on failure, only on all the things that went wrong. So we call those focus past positive or past negative. There are two ways to be present oriented. The most obvious is to be hedonistic, that you live for pleasure and you avoid pain. You seek novelty, you seek sensation. There are other people who are present oriented because they say, it doesn't pay to plan. My life is, is faded, faded by my religion, faded by my poverty, faded by the conditions of, that I'm living under. Most of us are here because we are future oriented, that we have learned to, to work rather than play, to, to resist temptation. But there's another way to be future oriented. Depending on your religion, life begins after the death of the mortal body. To be future oriented, you have to trust that when you make a decision about the future, it's going to carry out. If you have uh, great inflation, you don't put money in a bank because you can't trust the future. Uh, if you have, uh, if there's instability in your family, adults can't keep their promises to you. The closer you are to the equator, uh, the more present oriented you are. The more you're in an environment where climate doesn't change, it gives you a set of imagining sameness rather than change. Protestants everywhere have higher gross national product than Catholic countries, in part because of the Protestant ethic, because of uh, the notion that you work hard to succeed to demonstrate that you are God's chosen people. Uh, my family comes from Sicily, and in Italy there is a political movement called uh, La Liga to cut Italy in half, to have North Italy and South Italy, cut it just below Tuscany. The people in the North say, we do all the work. The people in the South are lazy, they're like children, they want to have babies, have three hour di dinners, uh, etc. People in the South say, they're not Italian, they're German and Austrian, you know. <laughs> they eat yogurt instead of pasta. <laughs> they, they take their lunch in a paper bag. And in the recent election, the, uh, the, the Liga got 14% of the national vote. It turns out, it is accurate, we've done research to say, people in the North tend to be, on a scale much more future oriented, people in the South tend to be more past, uh, past-oriented or present hedonistic. And so um, my family is Sicilian, and I come from Sicily. I go back every year. I started educational foundation. We send high school kids to college and set up computer labs. And I'm talking about some of this stuff, and a man comes up and says, I'm a poet. I live with words. And it wasn't until I heard your talk that I realized there's no future tense verb in Sicilian dialect. I said, what do you mean? There was, is, there's no will be. He said, that's why nothing gets done. <laughs> And I didn't realize it because we never plan. Uh, so again, here's how when you have a number of people who share a certain time perspective, then it, it does come to characterize the nation. In the same way, if you have a Catholic nation where people tend to be present or past oriented, rather than a Protestant nation where in general people tend to be more future oriented, it affects you in very profound ways. So there's a wonderful book called The Geography of Time, and it's written by a dear friend of mine, Robert Levine, who's a... a, a, a um, social psychologist, and he actually literally went around the world doing wonderful experiments. He looks at what he calls the pace of life. See, I, time perspective is how people divide their own experience into partitions, time zones. Another kind of time orientation is your sense of duration. How much time has expired while you're sitting in a dentist's office before they start drilling? How much time has expired uh, when you've been um, waiting in line? How much time has expired when um, you're having fun? All right, set. So time duration is totally a function of whether you're bored, whether you're excited or not. Uh, and what he does is he shows that in different cultures, people have a different pace of life. And you do this very simply. You sit in a cafe and you mark off 100 meters, and as people pass, you start a stopwatch. And you see how fast people walk. You go to a post office, and on a piece of paper you say, I'd like, you know, uh, three pounds of, of you know, this postage or uh, ten euros, and you see how long it takes. So he has a bunch of, uh, of these measures, and it turns out you can identify cultures as different t uh, pace of life, and now cities. And he shows in America you can rank 60 cities according high pace of life and low pace of life, and the ones that have the highest pace of life 
men have the most coronary problems. That is, this part this becomes part of your whole your whole way of life. We all begin life as present hedonists. All of us. I mean, at the breast, at the bottle, we want pleasure, we want to avoid pain. And one of the things that families do, and especially school, my, my sense is the purpose of schooling is to take present-oriented little beasts and make them more future-oriented. Some cultures make them more past-oriented. In America, a child drops out of school every nine seconds. This is worse for, for kids from a minority background, and it's worse for boys than girls. There's actually a disaster recipe developing among boys in America, literally dropping out of high school, college, and it's not simply poor performance. One of the problems is a recent study shows that by the time a boy is 21, he has spent at least 10,000 hours playing video games alone, probably more watching pornography alone. And you put that together, it means A, they haven't learned social skills, emotional, social intelligence, but also it means that they live in a world that they create. They're playing Warcraft, they're playing these other games, which is exciting. In fact, just, I just heard the other day that these game companies are now going to uh, uh, develop 3D games so that the, ga the world will be all around you. Their brains are being digitally rewired, which means they will never fit in a traditional classroom, which is analog. Somebody talks at you without even the nice pictures, meaning it's boring. I mean, you control nothing. You sit there passively. And if you want to change the curriculum, I, I understand the traditionalists here say we've got to go back to reading, writing, arithmetic. Disaster. These kids will never fit into that. They have to be in a situation where they are controlling something. And school is set up, you control nothing. You're passive. There's, school is all about learning, delay of gratification, literally endlessly. All addictions are addictions of present hedonism. Food, sex, drugs, gambling, etc. All of our propaganda, all of our educational message, all our public relations messages are designed for future-oriented kids, who's not the problem. They tell you, here's the negative consequences of doing what you're doing. Future-oriented kids know that, and they don't do it. Present-oriented kids know the future consequences. If you're a, a, a teenage girl, you know that if you have unprotected sex, you're likely to get pregnant or have sexually transmitted disease. You know it, but that knowledge never feeds back to change your behavior. So that's the interesting thing about time perspective. I think we are underestimating the power of technology in, in rewiring young people's brains. Kids don't wear wristwatches. They say it's a single function device. You don't, you don't waste time with a single function device. And they live in a digital thing. What matters is the second. You know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't mention one of the things that gets people upset in America is how long it takes to boot up your computer and how long it takes to download something. Less than a minute. That makes people angry. So, so it becomes an emotional thing. You get, you get angry waiting in line, waiting for services. Waiting is a waste of time, even if it's waiting for your computer to boot up. So I think there's a fundamental change going on in our culture that I think we adults are not realizing that kids are totally different than, than we were. And it's, and it's because it's revolution in time. There was a, a recent study we did with um, USA Today asking Americans how busy they are. The vast majority of Americans, more than 50%, said, I'm busier now than I was last year, I'm busier last year than the previous year, uh, and I sacrifice friends, family, and sleep for my success. This is across the board, not separating my future orientation. And then we say, suppose you had, eight, suppose you had an extra eight day a week, what would you do? They say, oh, that would be great. They would spend that, most of that time working harder, achieving more, not with friends, not with family, and not even, not even sleeping. They did this study 20 years ago, and I was upset, again, from this Italian background. Only 60% of Americans said they have regular sit-down family dinners. When we redid the study last year, only one in five American families have sit-down dinners together. In America, we talk about family values. You can't have a family value if you never have uh, family meals together. I think many of life's puzzles can be solved by simply understanding our own time perspective and that of others. Lots of conflict we have with people is really a conflict in different time perspectives. Once you're aware of that, you stop making negative attributions like you're dumb or you're childish or uh, uh, you're pig-headed or you're authoritarian. It's really the most simple idea in the world.